Let's begin with talking about some differences between the Southern Italian Renaissance and the Northern Renaissance. This is a good diagram for understanding how they differ. And I mainly want to talk about with the altarpieces we're going to talk about today, um, the difference in the detail. So Italian Renaissance is still very focused on that Greek idea. So looking for ideal beauty, whereas in the North, they base a lot on observation. So you have very intense realism. We also see a lot of domestic scenes. So in the home with a religious, a religious subject matter. We're going to talk about altarpieces in this video. And just to give you an idea, some altarpieces are small and can be folded up and carried away, but some are really big. This is actually my niece who is standing underneath one of the altar pieces on the left and it is huge so that one is not easily carried about however robert campion's uh, Maraud altar piece this is the annunciation center panel this is a small panel that could be folded up and carried away this one is layered with lots and lots of detail the main focus here is the symbolism of every single little item and detail as Gabriel comes to announce to Mary that she's going to bear the Christ child. Notice that Mary is hum in a humble position on the floor and the table is tilted up to us so that we can see all of the items on it. The artist is telling us this is important. So she is also reading. This is another thing to point out. That means that she is literate. So this is important for us to notice. Oftentimes used in work with the Virgin, Virgin Mary are candles, um, also the, the Holy Spirit, the symbol of the Holy Spirit, white linen towels, and also white lilies, all symbols of a divine Messiah, divine mission, Mary's virtues, that she is pure and holy. Um, also, the candle has just been snuffed out, but it is not completely out, and that's symbolizing that Christ cannot be snuffed out. One of Robert Campan's students is Roger van der Weyden, and this isn't necessarily an altarpiece. It doesn't have panels that open and close, but I just wanted to show you the difference of space. Notice how everything is very shallow and it's a very theatrical stage. There's a lot of emotion. This is called the deposition because Christ is no longer on the cross. Um, he is being taken down from it. So this is the actual motion and movement of people carrying him and taking him down from the cross. And then notice that Mary is kind of mimicking his same position as she is falling down and feels his agony. One of the most famous and large altar pieces is Jan van Eyck's Ghent altar piece. The main focus with this is the Lamb of Christ. So everyone is kind of centered around that. Uh, we do have Adam and Eve on some of these side panels. And I just want to point out that they are actually life size. One of the things that is interesting you want to pay attention to is that these frames are actually being made by artists. So it is very much a craftsman skill to be able to work with wood, to be able to carve out the inside where you could paint on it. So the artists are actually making these frames and I love the attention to detail here where Adam's foot is raising up above and it's kind of resting on the frame. So Van Eyck is very purposefully incorporating this, this human figure, the foot, as a part of the, the frame. So seeing artists kind of work with the frame as a part of the artwork is neat to notice those details. So the main piece here uh, where we see Christ uh, symbolically as the sacrificed lamb, this is the, the main point. This is the main thing. This is the driving reformation also that happens and is birthed in the north. So this is important to note. A lot of these things, these artworks and artists, they know what's going on. They're not living in a bubble and they're laying the foundation for the Reformation. Um, the Word of God and Christ being the main focal point 
uh, unlike we see in the South with the Catholic Church. The last artist that we want to talk about is a master woodworker. He was also uh, able to work with stone, but he worked a lot with wood, and his name is Tillman Riemenschneider, quite a last name. Riemenschneider is how you pronounce that. He is a master at woodwork. Remember, in the north, there's not a lot of quarries, so we don't have an extensive marble um, for sculptors to use. So wood was something that was a lot more readily available, it was less expensive, and he's one of the, the great wood sculptures in this area, and one of the last ones, actually. This is the one that I really want to talk about. This is the Holy Blood altarpiece in Rottenburg, Germany. This is a beautiful example, and notice that our subject matter is different. Um, it's not an interior uh, uh, scene in a home uh, with the Annunciation. It is not uh, have the Lamb of Christ. This is the Last Supper, and we're going to see a lot of Last Suppers, and this one is just so unique. I wanted us to really study and look at it. Uh, notice how detailed and intricate it is. There's lots of different pieces, and it does have those panels that close. This one is so unique because it has movable parts. It really is like a stage, like a play. Notice the windows that are in here behind our table and all of our disciples. These are actual real windows mimicking the real windows in the location where it is at in a church. So this is important to understand context. We aren't looking at this in a gallery setting. This is meant to be seen in a church and it has real glass behind them. Um, notice all the individuality, the features on each person is different. Notice the detail. Again, this observation is showing us what Northern artists can do. This is a shallow stage like Van der Weyden's painting. It has a late Gothic feeling to it. Um, there are late Gothic carvings up, up at the top, but notice all of those natural details um, where artists are looking at the world. There's light, natural light coming in here, so this really affects how we see it, and it really is meant to be a stage. The, the very center figure here is Judas, where he is turned looking at Christ, almost petitioning him. Um, Christ is kind of pulling away from him, so you can kind of see where our figures are. Judas is oftentimes depicted on the other side of the table as kind of an outcast, but Ruben Schneider has put all several disciples on the other side on benches, but Judas is the one standing up here, and he can actually be taken out and removed from the sculpture to kind of complete um, the scripture when he does betray Christ and he is replaced um, by another disciple.